Oh, Regis uh, Pro, uh, Regis Pro, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. Was, that was a good fight. That was a, that was a very good fight. Um, and I also, I've only what I only I did watch it the replay, but at the time I quite enjoyed um, Luke Campbell and Lomachenko as well. That was that was decent. He didn't. He only won one round though, didn't he? Really, one or two rounds. You could get. Yeah, probably, <laughs> but I just thought it was very. I just thought it was very high quality, and I agree with you. He probably only did win one or two rounds. But, he st but I still think, I know it sounds daft, but I still think that that was Luke Campbell's best ever performance. He hung in there, didn't he, bless him? Yeah, and I mean, that's just a, an indication of how good Lomachenko is when he can win, ten, say, 10 rounds out of 12 against a fighter who's put in a career best performance. That just shows the gulf. Yeah. Between them and, and um, what did you yeah. think? What did you think to the crawler cesspit pension payoff? Farewell. Well, I, didn't, I didn't watch it. I didn't watch it. Um, I saw a bit of the fallout. Um, I mean, I'm not. I'm not really surprised. I'm not. I'm not surprised. I mean, you've got Joe Gallagher. You know, not making it, not whispering a word then, and then a few weeks later, crying blue murder because people are asking for a rematch. I just, it's just a, it's just a joke, isn't it? What did you think to Callum Smith against Ryder? The, the, how they um, all behaved I, afterwards? Yeah, I didn't score it. I didn't score it. Um, and I, and I tweeted before the results were read out that. Uh, any result cannot be classed as a robbery either way. Win, draw or win the other way couldn't be classed as a robbery, but in my personal opinion. I know other people including you um, and Ozzy and the like are more strongly for um, Ryder was robbed. Yeah. I didn't necessarily agree with that. Um, I thought it was a good close fight, but it was the aftermath. I didn't agree with the aftermath where, where they was just you know, dismissed refusing, it, didn't they? Refusing, yeah, refusing the rematch just straight straight away. You know, refusing that point blank. I thought that was, I thought that was poor. Given that the people involved, it was the likes of Gallagher and his team. You know, we've got pointless rematches for the likes of Abraham. Uh, uh, sorry, Smith Smig or Smig. Crawler against yeah. Nare, yeah. Um, ex uh, Jose Burton against them. Um, Ugly only they wanted a rematch. I know they didn't. Screaming get one. for that um, one, then he got knocked out. Yeah. 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 Hey, the best thing, the best, best thing about that Buglioni uh, where we beat Burton is, um, but in that last round where it finished, I think it was 11 4 12, but um, Burton hit Buglioni with a right hand and rocked him back. And um, the corner, uh, so in them, um, in, uh, sat on the front row, were like all, all of the Smith brothers and Corolla and that, jumping up, get on him, jump on him, jump on him. Burton walked across the ring to try and jump on, on uh, Buglioni, got clocked fight was over and they all had to sit down in silence I thought that was fantastic <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny actually somebody told me a story about uh, and, and I don't forget I used to be a Paul Smith fan and I were one of them people cheering him when he fought Pascal you know in Commonwealth Games at gold medal I were a Paul Smith group here at one point but uh, Paul Smith and his brothers were all cheering Calamon and it was uh, an amateur fat show and they yeah. were screaming they were all on top of these this judge <laughs> And uh, the cards turned in were shocking because that's what they're doing. That's what they used to do at shows, didn't they? Yeah. Do you know? What? And I don't agree with things like that, but a lot of that goes on in amateurs. But oh, yeah, you've got to say, you know, when you look at what the Smiths have done, they've done well because they've they've had is it 15 world title fights and they've gone three and 12, haven't they? You know, for Callum's got three wins. Again, and, and they've got nine losses, aren't they? So, so they've gone Asson and Dam, George Groves, and who were the other one Ca Callum beat? Asson and Dam, George Groves, and oh, and Rocky Fielding. So they're the three wins that the Smiths have got between them all of a world champions, and they've got all them other losses and that. And, and I, I just think that looking at that, they've been matched correctly. And I think we give Joe Gallagher loads of stick, but. I think he deserves a lot of credit as a manager for getting them opportunities and for holding them back and swerving people. Because let's have it right, I know what Joe Gallagher said in a gym I were in with him and he was telling somebody, I'm not going to say who, I'll tell you afterwards, but he was saying, oh, we're not going to go to 175, Callum struggles to make 168, but we're not going to go to 175 because of bogeymen. You know, the bogeyman at 175, so he's going to stay yeah. at 168. Now, if you remember, he were, what he, what he, 33 month mandatory? And they kept ducking and diving and swerving and sliding. They didn't want to put him in with anybody. Then they got that World Boxing Super Series, didn't they? Then they jumped from the WBC 
to the WBA, didn't they? Yeah. They did the best to swerve people, and he did the same with Beefy Smith, you know. He got a gift with a WBO belt, but I think Joe Gallagher deserves credit, because he must be an half-alright trainer to train world champions. I mean, yeah, but there's a story behind every world champion, though, isn't there? Callum's story is he beat Groves who was shot, Beefy had a gift, didn't he? And then Qu Quig got a draw and he ended up lifting belt up and who was the other one? Crawler. He beat a champion that not beat a champion. It's, it were all good matchmaking behind scenes and that, wasn't it? He hasn't got an elite win, Joe Gallagher, as a trainer, has he? But, like you say, though, we can pick holes in it, but we can't criticise because he's manoeuvred his fighters into... He's manoeuvred his fighters. Yeah. I mean, but Dennis says to me, you can't criticise him, he's manoeuvred his fighters, he's got them well paid, and they've got world championship status for not going hard route. He says, not everybody can be a Clark Frotch or a Clinton yeah. Woods, can they? Do you know yeah. what I mean? They all they all can't do it the hard way, or a, or a Josh Whale, he's done it hard way. Some of them like to do it the easy way, like Anthony Joshua. He got gifted an IBF, didn't he? And that, that that's where I have a problem. People keep saying, oh, Parker, you're a hater, you're bitter, you're bitter, you're, you're jealous. Go to Adam Booth! Go to Adam Booth! He's the best in the world, Adam Booth! <laughs> Porky, you're jealous to death. No, I just call... I call the BS on it, and I don't like to be in a gym and Joel Gallagher's 20 foot away from me telling people that Callum Smith's the best thing since sliced bread, because when I look at his CV, like I said, I see a win over Rocky Fielding before he even won a belt, before he won WBA, and that were regular. I see a win over Assen and Dammer was shot to shit at middleweight, and I see a win over Groves who were trying to pull out and drag it out another two months with a bad shoulder injury. So I see the cards stacked in their favour on every single show. Callum Smith has made millions. He doesn't sell a ticket. Yeah. He does not sell a ticket, and I have a problem with that. But you've got to take your hat off to Joe Gallagher, and, it, and they're, they're going to go with what he does. He protects us. He's wrapped them all in cotton wool, the Smith brothers, and the S Swift is best out at lot, technician-wise, I think. But he's wrapped them all in cotton wool, Joe Gallagher, and he's delivered for them. Because two out of four are millionaires, and the other two are doing all right. So that's what a manager's job's to do, protect his fighter and pile the money up. Forget what the fans like us think, because we just overanalyse everything because we're hardcore. He's done well for him. he's rubbed a lot of people up the wrong way. You know, he gets a lot of stick, you know, people saying he shags dogs and this and that. I don't know where that comes from to me, is it Brian King? <laughs> yeah, it's not, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that personally. No, it's, you know, but at the end of the day, he's done well for him. I'm not a fan of his. I met, first time I met Joe Gallagher, I walked up to him, how are you doing, Joe? He looked at me and I went, I've got the same pair of trainers as them at home, Joe. And he had a pair of Air Force Ones on Nike. And Frotch was stood behind him with the same pair of Air Force Ones. And I had my Nike shocks on and I said, oh, I've got a pair of them. I should have put my Air Force Ones on. And he looked at me like I had gone out. And I thought, yeah. I feel like wringing your neck, mate. You know, he dismissed me. And I had a, yeah. I had a big problem with it all day at that weigh-in. But it is what it is, isn't it? It's Tesco, Joe. If you've got a problem, Joe, come see me. <laughs> come see me. Come see me. But other than that, yeah, it's boxing, isn't it, mate? We should just yeah. all move on and not, not bear grudges, but people do, don't they? So, yeah, that's it. this is what gets me with the social media. Listen to this, this is a funny story. I was going to tell you about this earlier, but I'll tell you now. Somebody sent me screenshots from, somebody's put out comments on YouTube saying that, and this person is called Jamie McDonnell. I mean, as if Jamie McDonnell's on YouTube in any index. Because I, I, I asked Dennis, he said he didn't bother with that, Jamie, he's not even into boxing. Somebody's put comments out saying that Steffi Bull's having an affair with Terry Harper, which is not true, right? Um, why would I waste my time with that? But Terry Harper's commented and said, we know who it is, he's got 20 accounts, and and she's put three pictures of emoji pigs, meaning me now. Let me say this, Terry Harper doesn't like men, right? So that's why I wouldn't put that out. And secondly, Steffi Bull's a married man, so them little games don't really bother me, but what people do in boxing, they try and cause trouble around certain people, and what I've got at the moment 
I've got people commenting on my live chats. They're calling people around Dennis like Richard Towers, drug dealers, saying I buy drugs off them, and they're abusing Dennis, and they're calling Josh Whale, Josh Stale, these same little group of people. I have a good idea who it is. Now, what these people do, they try and cause trouble for me behind the scenes, but let me tell you this, Smith, all right. Do you know the people around me? They're the ones sending me the stuff and they're saying, don't get revved up about this, it's just part of the game. So all they are doing is strengthening my hand, because I just sit yeah. back. Because you know me, right, you've met me now, I'm one of them people that, if I've got something to say, I'm going to use my camera and say it, because I am very yeah. confrontational. And if I have to eat humble pie sometimes or apologise, I will do that, but I'm not the type of guy to go say, let's, I tell you what, I've just got up and I've had my breakfast. Today, I'm going to, I'm going to pretend to be Jamie McDonnell and I'm going to say that Steffi Bull's having an affair with Terry Harper, a married man against a girl who doesn't like men. That's what I'm going to do today and I'm going to blame it on Porky Russ. Oh my <laughs> God, oh my God. And actually, for Terry Harper to believe that... Oh my God, she must be brainwashed by her manager. But let me tell you this, Terry Harper, you're far from my thoughts because I think women's boxing is an utter joke. All right, you're far from my thoughts, but good luck in your next fight, but all you are is just going to be somebody that's fed to Katie Taylor eventually if you can get there. So good luck to you, but you're far from my thoughts and so is Steffi Bull. But if he's got a problem, he can do what he did last week. Come and meet me, but he didn't, did he? Did I tell you that story, Smidal? No. Listen to this one. This is a corker. Uh, this is a true story, boys and girls. This is an exclusive. Mick Whale phones me up. Where are you, Russ? I'm just leaving office, quarter to 12. Do you want to meet me for a coffee, Russ, at the, this, this cafe at Mamba's? I went, yes, please. We went. Mick bought me a coffee. We sat down. Mick, I've got me back to window. Mick looked at me and he said, oh, Steffi Bull's just pulled up. I went, so? Get him round back and we'll get at it. We'll have a knock on back. He went, <laughs> so, so Mick Whale said, not a problem. And let me tell you this, Mick Whale, right, is not somebody that likes his name dragged into anything. So I'm not, I'm not going to, there's no bullshit here. This is a true story. So I thought, you know, Steffi Bull, right? We're going to have to get at it. So I said, Mick, get him round back. You can meet ref. Mick said, no problem. Then he, Mick, as Mick stood up, he says, oh, he's, he's with his wife and his daughter, Russ. There's going to be no trouble here. So I said, fair enough, Mick. Which you can understand that, can't you? Yeah. So we said, no, there's going to be no trouble. So Mick's gone outside and he's had a word with him and more or less said, look, you can either come in but I don't know what Russ is going to do. So his missus has gone, well, I'm going in there for something to eat. I'm going in there. But Steffi Bull didn't want to go in. So he had the opportunity to put his missus and daughter in the car, let him go home, and Mick would have took him home after our fight. You didn't want to do that, did you, Steffi? You know why? Because you're a coward. It's probably you doing all this damage around me, trying to damage all my friends and all my acquaintances. And all because I signed Josh Whale, your fighter. That's all it is. But that's yeah. the art. That's the coward. You know, a man that won't face me. Now, when a man won't face you or look you in the eye, Smido, he's a coward now. He had the chance to come and fight me. Now, we're talking about an ex-boxer. I'm not an ex-boxer, but I turn up for my battles. He didn't want to fight me. But yeah, he wants to go on all these accounts and cause me loads of problems behind the scenes. Cause of what? Cause I signed Josh Whale. Let me tell you this about how I signed Josh Whale. He's running around saying I'm sneaky and this and that. Well, all I've done is learn off him and Dennis. Josh Whale got beat in Europe, in France, for European title, and he got beat for British title back in England. So I made me move. I text Mick Whale and I said, Mick, you need a change. Why don't you come and work with Dennis and me? Mick didn't get back to me straight away. And then after a while, he texted me and he said, you know what, we'll have a meet. They weren't keen at first and, and, and they needed to think about it. It's not something that they rushed into because they got a good relationship with Steffi Ball. So when they left office, Denny, I said, Dennis, what do you think? And he says, they might sign, they might not. But Josh didn't look too uh, keen on, on signing because Dennis wanted him to fight at Bantamweight. And he said, you'll lose all your advantages going to February. So we had a discussion. Everybody said the bit. 
and then, and then we, we waited and they got back to us and they said they'll get a go. Now Steffi had two months on the contract with Josh left. Mick went to house, got the contract, uh, Steffi gave him it, there were no problem and everybody's moved on. Except Steffi Bull, he can't move on, he just can't let it go. You know what I mean? He's got all this money and all these fancy cars and watches and his life's so great, but he's bothered about, who? Oh, me, little Porky Russ. But let me tell you this, right? Do you know why I used to idolise him? Dennis says to me, you're going to work with Steffi Bull. He come and met me, Steffi Bull. He took me to a cafe. And I said, what do you want? He says, can you get me working with Dennis? He's got TV. I went, yeah. And then I told Dennis, he says, that's great, that. You, you can learn off him, Russ. And somewhere along the line... He rung Dennis up and he said, Dennis, I can't work with him, he's a dickhead. Dennis says, he's my mate. That's a true story, mate. So I don't know what it were, somewhere along the line, the relationship got soured. And when I found out that, I thought, I'll show you, boy. I will show you. So I bided my time and I took his biggest ticket seller off him. And it's obviously Good. snapped him in half, hasn't it? Because who has he got now, really? He's hanging, he's hanging on for dear life with Terry Harper. <laughs> what? What's she got? Two fights left. That's it. Tomlinson will not well, stay with him, I don't think. He's his best fighter, him and Dempsey Whalen. Them are prospects, so I don't know, mate. But there's little um, there's little piglets living rent free in Steffi Bull's head. Listen, mate. I live rent free in his head, and do you know, best thing about it is. <clears throat> I'm the type of guy that will come across him and I'll probably end up going to prison for him because I, I don't handle my emotions very good you know with people like that who disrespect me so I have to keep a tight lid on it but if he thinks he can cause me problems behind scenes with all his little fake accounts he needs to get he needs to get over it because we just laugh at him we just he laugh at him Got a lot of time because, I'll tell you this much, right? He'll be in from work just after four o'clock and then he'll start with his emails. And you know, the best thing about it is, I caught him out with one email and I replied and I says, and this email went back on the timeline part of it about a year and I said, fucking hell, you've changed your name to something else now. And, and, it, and, it, and it, he knew I'd caught him out, but what can you yeah. do? It's part and parcel of the game, innit? If nobody's going to face you and tell you what they think, they try and go around and damage you in other ways. I mean, he's saying to people, why don't Dennis get rid of him? Dennis is not going to get rid of me. Why would Dennis cash his mates in? If Dennis wanted to get rid of me, he would have done it a few years ago when I called him all names under the sun and he had Tony Bellew and all sorts of people ringing up saying, fucking hell, this guy you've got around you, Dennis, is crazy. Have you seen what he's doing on his YouTube <laughs> channel? So if he's not going to get rid of me then, he ain't now, is he? And all they're doing is everything that I'm saying is proving right. So my yeah. advice to you, Steffi Bull, is this. Come see me, grow a pair, you little Come sneaky little ginger cunt. But right, it is what I'm it is, isn't it? I'm gonna have to crack off. No problem, mate. Well, listen, you take care. I'm gonna go have my dinner now because I'm filming tonight at Mick Wales' show. So, all right, Adam. All right, mate. Speak to you, you take care. All the best to you and your family. I'll see you soon. Thank you. Cheers, Thank mate. You. Bye, bye. Well, all right. <coughs> Put my bins on. So that's basically it really, so I don't really want to speak about it now, but the the abuse that I get, I've got all saved, it's all saved and some of it is like, it's quite shocking. Whoa, I'm going to end up crashing here. Whoa. I'm nearly home now, I'm on the other road. But, but yeah, so... So grow a pair, Steffi, come and see me, and kneel before me. Kneel before me, because I'm just going to take you down. Forget all that Queen's Bureau stuff, you want taking down. People like you are vermin, vermin. Sending me stuff like that, eh? Sending me pictures of my children sliced up. Sending vile stuff about my kid's mum. Then you're gonna you wanna be inside her and all this and that. It's my kid's mum that. So alright, peace.